All right, so here she is, the quote unquote original Urban Decay Naked palette. Uh, I just placed an order at Ulta this morning for pickup, and so uh, here she is in my hands. Uh, I did see that the display at Ulta was sold out, so I'm not sure how quickly this is going or if they just hadn't fully stocked it yet. Uh, but yeah, what I wanted to do was to compare this new slash old Naked palette to the older formula. So. Uh, I did purchase the original Naked palette in about 2010 when it first launched, but when they announced they were going to be discontinuing it in 2018, uh, I picked it up when I think this was half off at Sephora, so I only paid about $27 for it. But this palette is from 2018. You can see it had a brush, which obviously I got a lot of use out of. Uh, you may recall the original, original Naked palette and I held on to this just for, I don't know, posterity or whatever. Uh, it came with a double-ended eyeliner pencil, which for me, I think has more value. Uh, let me know if you prefer a brush or an eyeliner pencil like this, but you got the uh, Whiskey Shade, which is a kind of darker medium brown, and Zero, which is their black. So anyway, so I was a big fan of the 24-7 pencil liner formula, and I had many, many shades over the years. Uh, so what I thought I would do is swatch this formula against this kind of new, possibly improved formula. And if you're not aware, the main difference is going to be this original Naked formula wasn't vegan. Uh, they have since reformulated their shadows to be vegan. Uh, so you may recall I have some iterations here of their single shadows. And uh, this was the really old version. Uh, they were made to look like subway tokens. And I'd actually uh, depotted this, so I kind of destroyed it. But I held onto the case. Uh, and then they came out with this kind of new and improved version. Uh, this was in the shade Gunmetal. This was Sin. This one had kind of a clunky mechanism where you could buy empty palettes and pop out this middle portion, and then this would snap into those palettes. So that was the system they had for a while, and then I believe it was three years ago, they reformulated to be vegan. So I picked up this shadow also in the shade Sin. I think at the time I was going to do kind of a comparison of the formulations. I guess I have to go up from the top, uh, but I don't think I ever got around to it. But anyway, this newer formula, it's the same kind of single shadow uh, packaging that they have now, same as their like moon dust. And these aren't removable from the pan. I guess you could try to depot them, but it would ruin uh, the component. So. That is what they went to, and because they have reformulated to be vegan, this Urban Decay Naked palette um, is vegan, whereas this one was not. This one had carmine in it, which is a non-vegan ingredient. Okay, so let's just take a closer look at the packaging. Unfortunately, I didn't hold on to the box for this Naked palette. Uh, I wish that I had, but uh, unfortunately I did not. And this one, it looks like 24 month shelf life, 12 by one grams. It's a little hard to see on here. These were actually slightly bigger, I believe. It says 12 by 1.3 grams. This was bulk made in the USA, assembled in Dominican Republic. I think this was also 24 month, but it's a little bit difficult to read. Yeah, I think this is the same. So made in the US, of US and or imported materials finished in the Dominican Republic. So let's go ahead and get in here. And it does say look inside. There's some printing on the inside here that I would have to destroy the box to get at. So I'll let someone else do that. Uh, but yeah, they kept the same packaging. This one feels a little bit softer, but I don't know if that's just because it's been handled a little bit more. Packaging wise, they look pretty identical. It's a little bit different on the back here. Uh, it looks like this one up here actually has some, I'm guessing Chinese characters. Let me zoom in a touch. Some Chinese characters and down here as well. This one said beauty with an edge. Uh, the brush was made in China. And this one does say L'Oreal on it. 
Yeah, I forget when they, they sold Urban Decay. Uh, but let's zoom back out a tad. So this one does come with a brush as well. The brush is slightly different. So this is the older brush. It had a little bit of a firmer shader and then a little bit of a fluffier brush. I guess you could use that to blend with. Uh, this one, you can see the look of the brush is different. Uh, so this one, it's clear in the middle, obviously, and this side is a little bit more like a MAC 232 or a Refer 2 brush, I believe. And on this side, they're a little bit more similar. You can see this one is maybe a little bit longer, a little bit fluffier. Uh, they're both synthetic uh, bristles. Uh, obviously, because they went vegan with their shadows, uh, they're going to have a vegan brush as well. So that's an overview. Like I said, I'm going to try and keep this on the shorter side. I think I'll just have them stacked like this. So uh, this is the older palette. This is the newer one with the clear brush. And I will follow that layout on my arm as well. Uh, so I'm just going in with a unprimed arm, uh, which is what I've been doing lately with my swatches. I used to do primer uh, but just know that on my eyelids, I do use primer. And of course, I have to reference the classic Urban Decay Primer Potion. Uh, this was my kind of entry into eyeshadow primers, which is someone with um, hooded lids that tend to, I guess, get a little bit oily. Uh, eyeshadow primer was definitely a saving grace. I also really enjoyed kind of the different colors that they came out with. Like they did have a sin shade and that kind of thing. Okay, so let's go into Virgin. So this one is the older one, uh, and this is a cool cream beige satin finish, and Urban Decay calls it the ultimate multi-use shade. Use it as a base highlight. The options are endless. So I have to make sure I get kind of the right line up here. So I'd say the newer one maybe looks a touch darker. And keep in mind, this is a 2018 palette and it did have a 24 month shelf life. So I have used it recently and I think it, it's held up pretty well. Uh, and I think it's certainly better than maybe a 2010 palette would have been. Uh, but just, just be aware of that. Okay. So sin, um, and some of the kind of chunkiness you're seeing on the finger may be uh, the result of that. Okay. So sin is a champagne, although this one is slightly chunky as well. A uh, champagne shimmer finish and a fan favorite. So that is Sin. This used to be an everyday palette for me. So I'd say that's pretty close. Heather Austin did two eye looks with this palette. So if you'd like to see uh, some eye looks on kind of a medium to tan skin tone. And I'll just quickly do some comparison swatches. So this is the full size Sin and the newer formula. So new formula and new formula from the palette. That actually looks a little different, doesn't it? Shade wise. And those should both be the same. They should both be the vegan formula. And uh, Carmine is a red pigment, so you would think that if anything, by taking out Carmine, they would, I don't know, be less pink. So these are the older formulas of Sin, both in the palette and the, the single. So yeah, so this one I'd say is maybe the peachiest out of the bunch. Very interesting. I don't know that you would notice necessarily a difference on the lid. All right, so going into Naked, this is a neutral beige matte finish. And I think I was lucky in, in the mattes that they chose. I think they really suited someone with my skin tone a lot. I think the newer one is maybe a touch, a touch cooler. It's a little bit difficult, admittedly, because I'm using different fingers to swatch. So yeah, pretty, pretty close. And we do have these longer rectangular pans as well, as opposed to like a circular pan. So yeah, so this would be my everyday kind of go-to palette. And I primarily would use Virgin Sin Naked and Buck. 
kind of as my everyday. Uh, so let's go into Sidecar. I saw Kat um, from Beauty News do a look with the old palette and she said that she really loved the Sidecar shade. I think the new one does maybe have a little bit more reflect to it. Uh, so they say that this one is a rose gold metallic finish. Uh, next up we have Buck, which is a neutral medium brown matte finish. Yeah, the new one looks a touch cooler on the finger anyway. Very nice and creamy. I, I'd say if anything, I'd say that the newer palette is definitely not inferior so far. Next up we have Half Baked, which is a light gold shimmer finish. And apparently this was the iconic shade. We all hit pan on. I don't think I ever hit pan, um, but this is half baked. The new one feels a touch, a touch rougher maybe. So that is half baked. Okay, next up we have Smog, which is a bronze metallic finish. Uh, next up is Dark Horse, which is a dark brown shimmer finish. That one also a little, a little chunky. That one almost has a bit of an olive undertone to it. Uh, Toasted is a rosy taupe shimmer finish. Uh, next up is Hustle, which is a dark taupe satin finish. And they say, perfect for a sultry, dark brown, smoky eye. So that is Hustle. Next up is Creep. This is a black with silver glitter and it is a satin finish. Just build that one up just a touch. And then finally we have Gunmetal, which is a cool gray metallic finish. This one is one of the, I guess, drier shades out of the bunch, but still not bad. Okay, so that is the full side-by-side -side here, and I'll just zoom you guys in and take a nice close look. So just to kind of go down the list here, we have Virgin, and the, uh, the newer palette is on the right side. So Virgin, Sin, Naked, Sidecar, Buck, Half baked, just trying to show you an kind of equal reflect. A half baked smog, dark horse, toasted, hustle, and then finally creep and gunmetal. And that is what the two palettes look like after swatching. So let me know what you guys think. Do you still have the older palette? Uh, are you still using it? Uh, are you excited to see this new kind of re-release or do you think it's kind of a cash grab? So let me know down below if you missed out the first time around and you're excited to see it back or if you are not interested in it whatsoever. But uh, either way, even though we have, I guess, moved on a little bit in terms of our, our preferences and that kind of thing, it's still a very beautiful palette, beautiful color story. Uh, it dominated the kind of palette game for so long for a reason and it really was kind of the first of its kind that in a way kind of kicked off the uh, the beauty community on YouTube. So I'd be interested in hearing what you guys think down below and if you haven't already subscribed please make sure you do before you go and until next time I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye!